And European markets, of course, traded cautiously in the morning as investors monitor the increasing involvement of technology giants in the U.S.-China trade war. It's a big corporate day in Germany as well, with annual meetings at Daimler and Commerzbank. Lars Alter will tell us more about these. Hello, Lars. Good afternoon. A big day for Daimler Hello, after 13 years. Now the CEO is leaving the company. How is the car maker doing without him? Well, generally, they should be doing just fine because under Dieter Zetsche, even though he had some difficult years as of late, especially with regards to the diesel scandal, um, uh, the company generally is doing pretty well. And Ole Kelenius, the, the successor, has been with Daimler for 25 years and he has worked alongside uh, Dieter Zetsche for the last year or so because he was already uh, known as the designated successor. So things should be looking pretty good, but at the same time, uh, we should note that uh, he is actually taking the helm at very interesting and very difficult times for uh, Daimler because Daimler is about to change. And that's after a plan that was already hatched over the last two years. The idea is basically for Daimler to split up in three different very strong groups. The car group, the truck group, and most importantly, the mobility group, which deals, of course, with new technologies, with the sharing economy, with autonomous driving, with uh, things like that. So there is uh, quite a lot of work to do. Ole Kelenius definitely has work cut out for him. German lender Commerce Bank has just recently ended talks over a possible merger with Deutsche Bank. Today, the bank has to face its shareholders. What was the mood at the meeting and do investors see a future for the bank without a partnership with Deutsche Bank? Well, the mood there was quite mixed today. First of all, it was not a terrible year for Commerzbank for the first time in uh, a long time, for the first time actually since the financial crisis, Commerzbank was able to pay out a dividend to investors. So that looks like things are going up at least for the bank. But at the same time, yes, as you mentioned, uh, Commerzbank being a very small lender now, ever since the financial crisis, they had big problems. They are suffering under the low interest interest rate policy that we've been seeing for almost a decade now, um, they can't really go it alone anymore. And a merger with Deutsche Bank was in the cards for a while now that it isn't working. Everyone's asking who else might be interested in taking over Commerzbank. And three suitors come to mind here. Of course, on the French side, BNP, Paribas, they said they are not interested anymore. They had looked at it at some point. Then you have ING, the Dutch banking giant, and that is a very likely possibility. And on the other side, the definitely interested suitor uh, would be Unicredit uh, from Italy. Uh, but that would be a risky bet for the bank as well, because Unicredit, just as uh, Commerzbank itself, they hold a lot of Italian debt. And that, of course, given the uh, developments of the last couple of years is uh, a risk all by itself. Uh, so everybody's asking a lot of questions, and it looks right now after today's meeting that Commerzbank does not have all the answers. Of course, um, Deutsche Bank will hold its shareholder meeting tomorrow. What can we expect to hear from them? Well, management will sound optimistic. They have already uh, said and they have written to shareholders that things are looking good at Deutsche Bank. Uh, Deutsche Bank actually has uh, had its first profitable year in over five years. And they said they're investing in doing the right things, including protecting their customers, but also fixing all their legal problems. One specific thing that uh, stuck out to me a little bit is that CEO Christian Seving wrote to the investors that they are working very hard in investing to prop up their software uh, to be better protected when it comes to fraudulent trades or suspicious activity. Now, unfortunately, uh, just two days ago, we had that story that Deutsche Bank did not act at all when its uh, software actually flagged some suspicious activity on President Trump's accounts. Uh, so question is really here, how much is the bank really doing? Can they ever get out of that crisis? Can uh, they win customers' trust back? So there's going to be a lot of questions raised, and there's going to be a lot of questions not only for the CEO, but also for Paul Achleitner, who heads the supervisory board, and his future might be at stake at tomorrow's meeting as well. We'll wait to see what the outcome would be. Enjoy the rest of the day, Lars.
In Asia, markets were mixed today as trade tensions continue to linger between the U.S. and China. Shares in mainland and China edged down on the day with Shanghai Composite declining 0.49%. Shenzhen Composite fell 0.506%. Hong Kong's Hang Seng rose about 0.2%. The Nikkei 225 in Japan rose fractionally. In South Korea, the Kospi recovered from its earlier slip to close 0.18%. And in the U.S., stock index futures were a little changed this morning as market participants continue to monitor an intensifying trade war between the world's two largest economies. Our market focus is largely attuned to global trade developments at the time when negotiations between the U.S. and China have faltered. In corporate news, lows Target and Canadian Imperial Bank are among some of the companies expected to release their latest quarterly results before the opening bell. And away from the equities market, then back here on the African continent, the Nigeria Communications Commission says MTN has paid 275 billion naira out of a 330 billion naira fine imposed on it for not disconnecting on registered SIM card and has until the end of the month to pay the final balance of 55 billion naira. MTN was originally fined 1.04 trillion naira for failing to deactivate more than 5 million unregistered SIM cards, but it negotiated a reduced fine to clear its path to list its subsidiary on the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Our Congo Republic's Senate has voted to restructure some of its debts with China, a move that the International Monetary Fund has said was necessary to unlock financial support. Negotiations over a bailout for the oil-dependent economy have dragged on since 2017 as Congolese authorities failed to convince the IMF that they were doing enough to control the national debt or tackle corruption. But an IMF mission says this month that it had agreed a three-year lending program with Congo Republic subject to the government's fulfillment of reforms and approval by the IMF's executive board. The government signed an agreement with Beijing in April to restructure more than $2.5 billion in debt. Congo's Senate voted to approve the restructuring of loans from China's import-export bank, which includes eight credit agreements between Congo and China. And Tanzania plans to start cancelling inactive mining exploration licenses and distribute the acreage to artisanal miners who are able to immediately commence activity in the area. Deputy Minister for Minerals said he had issued an order that all inactive prospecting licenses are cancelled for the areas to be given to the small-scale miners who are eager to develop and increase the contribution of the mining sector since assuming power in 2015, President John Magufuli has effected various reforms in the mining sector to maximize its value and also ensure citizens take bigger slice of the country's natural resource wealth. Some reforms have seen taxes of mining firms go up, while measures have also been taken to curb illegal mining exports. We'll take a break, and when we come back, South Africa's consumer inflation slows in April. Of course, we'll bring you updates from the Nigerian Stock Exchange. Just stay with us.